Welcome to the gaming news of the week. This week, Final Fantasy XVI announced the rising tide in a new DLC trailer. Square Enix has announced that the upcoming DLC for Final Fantasy XVI, titled The Rising Tide, will be available for PlayStation 5 starting April 18th. The news was revealed at the end of a game panel held at the PAX East Fair, where the premise of the DLC's story was introduced. An unmarked letter arrives at the hideout with a very curious request. The dominance of Leviathan, icon of water lost long ago, needs to be rescued reads the description accompanying the new trailer, which you can find on YouTube. Unlike the previous DLC, which already included battles, weapons, accessories, new levels, and more, The Rising Tide is a larger expansion in which Clive and his companions travel to Mysidia, a land hidden under a blue sky, where they will discover the tragic story of a forgotten village. It's worth remembering that even with the DLC launch, the base game of Final Fantasy XVI is a content-filled experience. However, since a lot of players demanded it, Creative Business Unit 3 prepared these DLCs, which are expected to be the only ones the game will receive. The Rising Tide DLC will be priced at $19.99. However, you can also buy it for $24.99 along with the Echoes of the Fallen DLC with the game's expansion pass. If you haven't already purchased that DLC, you'll be saving 5 bucks. Next up in the news for the week, we have Sworn, a co-op roguelike coming to consoles and PC this year. Windwalk Games and Team17 Digital have announced Sworn, an upcoming co-op action roguelike launching on PC and consoles, also available to play in a closed playtest. Set in the heart of Arthurian legends, players will team up in a fallen Camelot under the control of a corrupted King Arthur and his Knights of the Round Table. You'll be able to play with up to 4 players in co-op, battle Arthur's corrupted forces in deadly biomes, upgrade abilities with over 200 unique blessings of the Fae, and take enemy upgrades and knowledge beyond death to progress further each run, ultimately reaching Camelot and slaying King Arthur himself. If you swear loyalty to the Fae Lords, you can choose from over 200 unique blessings to unlock their full potential. You can also combine the blessings of Fae Lords with unique characters, weapons, and abilities to create thousands of configurations on the journey to become an experienced knight. If that sounds interesting and you're eager to take up arms against King Arthur, you can apply to participate in the closed beta tests through the link in our article. In terms of release date, so far we only know that it's going to arrive later this year. Next up we have some Dragon's Dogma 2 news. Dragon's Dogma 2 has already been released on the PS5, Xbox Series X and S, and PC. The title was very highly anticipated, but the reception has been polarizing, with some praising the vast open world and some criticizing various aspects of the game, such as the singular save file, the performance, missing graphical options, and a lot more. The thousands of criticisms that Capcom have received have had an effect, and the company has spoken out. The new update will include a bunch of fixes targeted at some criticisms. We already covered this in a recent video, so here's just a brief breakdown of the future updates. Adding the option to start a new game when there's existing save data. Changing the number of Art of Metamorphosis items available in pawn gills in the game to 99. Making the mission that allows players to acquire their own home available earlier in the game. Various text display fixes. Various bug fixes. Updates for consoles include adding the option to enable or disable motion blur. Adding the option to enable or disable ray tracing and adding the option to adjust framerate speed to variable or 30fps max. For Steam, they plan to improve quality when DLSS Super Resolution is enabled, and are currently fixing an issue where models appeared with low quality in specific settings. Currently, there's no deadline set for the release for the various updates. Capcom assured that it will come in the short term to address some of the game's shortcomings in its early days on the market. Next, we have some news from No Rest for the Wicked. No Rest for the Wicked is an action role-playing game from Moon Studios and Private Division. It's set to launch on April 18th, 2024 in early access on PC via Steam. During the first two weeks following its early access launch, No Rest for the Wicked will be available at a special introductory price of $31.99 on Steam. Additionally, Private Division plans to collaborate with various streamers and content creators for an affiliate program for the game. From the affiliate program, players can enjoy an additional $4 off the special introductory price when purchasing through the affiliate link, resulting in a reduced price of $27.99 for the first two weeks. No Rest for the Wicked seems to be taking a different direction to Will of the Wisps with a much more dark and mature theme as well as shifting into an animated 3D style, a similar situation to Morbid the Lords of Ire. We recently did a first impressions video around a month ago, so if you're interested in the gameplay, you can check it out on our channel. Next up we have some news about the 1,900 Activision and Blizzard employees recently laid off at Microsoft. Phil Spencer, CEO of Microsoft Gaming, recently spoke about the Activision layoffs and confirms that it was necessary for the company because it's a business that has to be profitable. 
Microsoft and Xbox started 2024 by announcing massive layoffs, joining the wave of layoffs in the gaming industry due to not meeting exaggerated expectations set in the recent years. Phil Spencer, head of Microsoft Gaming, spoke about the issue and explained the reasons. He states that Activision was already planning the layoffs before it was acquired by Microsoft. Additionally, the changes in the industry regarding the increase in the cost of game development has also played a role in the situation. Phil Spencer officially stated the following. We're a business. I can't afford to run a business that's not profitable and growing within Microsoft. I reflect on friends of mine who have been displaced and lost their jobs, and I don't want this industry to be a place where people can't confidently build a career. So that's why I keep looking back. How can this industry grow again? For us as Xbox or any of the teams out there, what we're experiencing is really the result of an industry that isn't growing but can and will grow again. However, the implications have a human impact and we should all reflect on that and think about it. With that, Phil Spencer seems to have made it clear that this wave of layoffs is due to a general restructuring of the gaming industry. Keeping that topic, Sega Europe has also announced that they've laid off 240 employees. The president of Sega Europe, Jurgen Post, notified layoffs which will affect around 240 employees of Sega Europe, Creative Assembly, and a small number at Hardlight. At the moment, it appears that Sports Interactive Studios, Two Point Studios, and Aplitude have not been affected. In Jurgen Post's words, the layoffs are necessary to ensure the future of our business. And these decisions are incredibly difficult to make and follow careful consideration with the management team. We need to organize ourselves, focus on what we are good at, and position ourselves as best as we can for the future. To achieve this, we must respond to the changing economic situation and the challenges we face as we develop and launch our products to the market. The new wave of layoffs at Sega Europe comes after a rather turbulent year in the Japanese company's division. In May 2023, 121 employees were laid off from Relic Entertainment. In September, Hyenas at Creative Assembly was cancelled. And at the end of the year, there were controversies with the releases of Total War Pharaoh and the Total War Warhammer 3 DLC. Moving on from layoffs, we have some news from Throne and Liberty. Amazon Games and NCSoft have announced a new stage in the development of Throne and Liberty, a highly anticipated MMO coming to PC, PS5, and Xbox Series X and S. There will be a closed beta selecting a group of players to immerse themselves in the world of Cilicium to experience firsthand the game's new features, including significant improvements in character progression, combat, and the introduction of the game's auction house. Unlike previous tests, this version will not have a level cap, thus offering a broader and more complete experience. The launch of the closed beta is scheduled to begin on April 10th, and will conclude on April 17th. If you're interested, you have to register before April 2nd to be eligible for an invitation. The game features challenging bosses, extensive dungeons, guild battles for territorial control and loot, as well as many other activities. If you've been itching for a new MMO, I recommend checking it out. Next we have some news about Earthblade. Extremely OK Games, the team behind Celeste, announced a 2D exploration game in 2021 called Earthblade, and introduced it with a trailer in December 2022 during the Game Awards, with an approximate release date for 2024. However, in a statement by studio director Maddie Torson, they've confirmed that the team will not be able to reach that date even though they had hoped to announce a more defined release date around this time. In their words, first off, we have to face the music. This game isn't coming out in 2024. We would have liked to have a firm release date announced by now, but that's not in the cards yet. We know this will be disappointing to many of you and we're sorry. The team has grown with the arrival of Kyle Pulver, an independent game designer who has worked on games like Depict One and Offspring Fling. According to Maddie, their intention is for extremely okay games to not grow too much so they can iterate ideas quickly. Torsen stated that Kyle quickly came to us with a big idea that scared everyone involved, but it was clear he wasn't there to derail the project. He's working with us to identify and find solutions to our vision and the issues preventing our games from realizing that vision. Plus, his fresh eyes inspired us all to look at things differently. Even with the delay, Extremely OK Games hasn't really been idle. They recently released the free spin-off Celeste 64 earlier this year to celebrate the game's 6th anniversary. Up next, we have some news about Witcher 4. The Polish company CD Projekt Red has shown that the vast majority of its development team is focused on the new installment of the successful series The Witcher. As shown in the latest fiscal balance talk of 2023, the Polish company revealed that at the moment, most of its efforts are focused on the development of The Witcher 4, the next installment of its popular fantasy RPG series born in 2007. With Cyberpunk 2077 already established as a strong game with a limited amount of DLC that could arrive in this future, CD Projekt Red has disclosed the exact number of developers assigned to each project. In the graph which was part of the fiscal call, 403 out of the company's 627 developers are currently working on the development of The Witcher 4. 
In 2022, CD Projekt Red had stated that the game still had at least three years of work left. Therefore, in the most optimistic scenario, the game could be released in 2025. However, speculation has already begun that The Witcher could arrive as late as 2026 or even 2027. Moving on, our last piece of news for the week is Wuthering Waves. You may not have heard of it, but Wuthering Waves has become one of the most anticipated mobile games, also available on other gaming platforms and being hailed as the Genshin Killer. The game is being developed by Kuro Games, the creators of Punishing Grey Raven. After several closed betas and a lot of user feedback, an official release date has finally been revealed for Wuthering Waves in their recent livestream. In the stream, they talked about the significant changes and improvements made to the game based on all the comments, suggestions, and feedback they received after the last closed beta. At the end of the stream, they gave a release date, May 22nd, 2024. This means that in almost two months, we will be able to delve into the fantastic world and get the full experience of the incredibly anticipated RPG. However, even though it's being dubbed as the Genshin Killer, Wuthering Waves is not seeking to replicate everything Genshin Impact does. Instead, they aim to have their own identity through a visually stunning game that also integrates new mechanics and wild gameplay, reminiscent of their other mobile game, Punishing Grey Raven. Wuthering Waves will be available on mobile, PC, PS5, and Xbox Series X and S. Additionally, it has also been confirmed that it will have official crossplay support, and it will feature the ability to transfer progress between devices, thus facilitating the experience of being able to play and continue your game from any smart device. And to top it off, it's all completely free, definitely makes it a game worth looking out for. So that's about it for this week's news. If you're interested in supporting the channel, be sure to leave a comment, let us know what you think about all the news, and check out our VIP subscription on the website for some exclusive supporter benefits. We will be seeing you next week.